Sometimes quilting with squares can be simple. It can be more complicated. It just sort of depends what you do with them. And today we are going to play with squares in such a fun way. We're going to use two inch squares and we are going to do pixel art. So this is from a pixel artist that I know and we made it into a quilt. Let me show you how. After we commissioned the art, we made a master grid of the quilt that we wanted to make. I take markers and I color all the A's one color and all the B's another color because I want to be able to discern the difference with my colors and I'm not going to actually have purple in the C so I'm not coloring them the colors that the fabric is going to be I'm just differentiating them so that I can see them clearly and make it easier when I'm ready to lay out the fabrics so I go through and every letter I assign it a different marker and then I color it and mark it it just makes it so that your brain is prepared to understand the ins and outs of the pattern and where all the colors are when you're ready to lay it out. The concept of pixel art has you shade it really interestingly. So somehow in using the markers, it helped my brain to better understand what I was going to do as a quilt pixel artist. Coloring the eyes, coloring the details. Right here, I made a mistake. So I colored the wrong color on the wrong thing. So if you do that, I just took a black pen and marked what really was in there. And it's okay, no biggie. Underneath the squares that we made, we have the number of each color of fabric that we need. So that is really an important part. We bring our colored pattern over to the fabric I've already chosen to make sure it's going to work. So the three teals you see are the three I've chosen for the background water. And the orange are, of course, chosen to be the shell. The green, the body of the turtle. So I'm checking to make sure there's enough contrast because that is the thing that will upset you the most is if there's not enough contrast between the sea and the body of the animal that you're making. You want to be able to be able to truly see that that critter is in the water and be able to see what they're doing. The blue is the eye and it also needs to have contrast because it's touching close to the water. And then after I make sure I like them, I cut up a tiny, tiny little square. This is so fun. You put it as your master on the little square that is there. And if you're making this with scraps, you will do it differently. You'll designate these seven colors are B, and then you make a pile and put B near them. But when you're doing one color per letter, then you put one color per letter, and then you aren't confused as you're laying it out. You will have an instant reminder of what color goes where as you lay out the quilt. Making a pixel art quilt is really pretty straightforward and simple. We're going to use two inch blocks. Make sure they're as square as you can make them and that your cutting is accurate. This is that color that I just pointed at and I'm counting because it tells me how many I need. And I'm making them right side up because I like them right side up. If you don't care, you can turn them when you're putting them down. This is how I accomplish that if I don't want to turn them as I count because there's more. I just lay them out with the strips on top of each other very carefully and that way I don't have to flip them around ever because they're all facing up. So when I go to lay them out, they're all in the right direction. So I'm doing math as I pick them up, four, eight, 12, and that way I can keep track of it as I go. This is simple. However you cut out your squares will work, you choose. As you know, some fabrics are directional, as is this one. And so you have to decide if you care about it being directional or not. And as you can see, as you watch me start to lay it out, I care. I'm doing this first line. It's kind of like doing a cross stitch pattern if you've ever done cross stitch. You just count and keep track. You can do one row at a time. There's the whole row. I've counted and double counted. I know everything's right. And that is where I start. Then I go on to the second row. I count, I start laying them out. I make them as neat as possible. You can do this on a design wall. I like to do it on my design floor, wherever you want to lay it out. Now, if you don't want to lay it out, if this seems awful to you, and I love laying it out because I like to see it before I start sewing it together, but if you don't want to, you could take that top row, lay it out, double check yourself, know you're right, and then sew it all the way together. And then take the second row, lay it out, double check, make sure you're right, and sew it all the way together. Just check as you go if you do that, and then you never have to lay it out. Again, I like to lay it out. It's just so fun to see it come together. And if you make a design choice that you hate, let's say you pick a color on the shell that you thought would work, and you get it laid out and you don't like it, you can just 
just pick up that one color and replace it with a different color. Yes, you'll have extra squares, but so what? So I like laying it out just because then I'm totally aware of what it's going to look like when I sew it together. I number my rows just like they're numbered on the grid. The bottom corner is one and it goes up to 24. And then I pin my rows together and I put them in a pile. I like to pin because I get confused and with this one especially, I do not want one square to be out of place. I like to get a container to keep this project in. I plan to sew it together quickly, but I can't necessarily sew it all in one sitting. And so I love having it held in a container because the pins can become undone if they're ruffled around too much. So putting it in a little box or on a cookie sheet or in a little container while you sew it. And then as you go and come back to it, you'll be able to start up right where you left off. It's really important here to make all your seams consistent. So if you want to make them quarter inch, great. If you want to make them a little bigger, go ahead. It will affect the size of your finished quilt, but as long as you're consistent with yourself, this is going to be beautiful when you're done. You can sew this together in whichever technique you like best. I'm doing it randomly sewing the seams. You could use a quilter's grid. It would be a really great one to web. So you choose, put it together in your favorite method ever. We have two more patterns that we're gonna show you in a minute. We made an orca pattern and a jellyfish pattern, and it's our trio of sea life patterns, and they're so fun. We could hardly stop at three, but we stopped for now to see how interested anybody really is, except for us. We're so interested. We love these. You can see that I'm pressing. I'm doing my odd away from the odd and towards the even so I can go back forth, back forth and have the little seams budge together so beautifully. Now that I've shown you some pixel art quilts, I want to tell you some ways to do them without having to buy a pattern. If you don't wanna buy our patterns and you wanna still play with pixel art, let me tell you how. If you can get your hands on some cross stitch books, I paid a dollar for this one at a thrift store, then you can find pixel art. Some of the cross stitch won't work and some of it is splendid. You want cross stitch that has complete squares. If it has an outline stitch or just lined stitch, it will be much harder to adapt, but some of them are brilliant. You can take words off. The pea pot is cute, but you have to remove some of it for it to work. And you just look through the book. That little bear would work perfectly. This little row of patterns would work perfectly. You just get some grid paper, draw them up, and decide what you want. Another way that you can get some patterns is you also could hire a pixel artist. The one we hired is a relative, and he's a really good guy and does a great job, and he is willing to be hired out. But so are a lot of other pixel artists, so you can look online. And if you want to make pixel art yourself, there are tutorials and ways to learn to make pixel art online. So maybe you want to design your own quilt. Go ahead it is so fun to do quilts that are also pixel art. We appreciate that you've been telling other people that we're here and so that they can be part of our merry community. And we'd love if you would share some more so that we can find more quilters that we haven't met yet. Look at the orca. Part of his body is scrappy and the jellyfish was scrappy too. I combined a whole bunch of purples together and it was a fun experiment and play. So I hope that you will figure out a place in a way that you will enjoy trying pixel art. It is really, really creative and fun. Stay merry and creative.